All right, so first thing is over here, I put out a bunch of little lids, all right? Looks like that. This is just gonna be extra space for you to mix paint. Since you have such limited space, it's just gonna be really helpful. What I went ahead and did for the sake of time was I took a look at my photo and I went and mixed as many colors I possibly could. So I have my green for my kiwi. I have, I think this is my red for my strawberry. I have the red for my pomegranate seeds. I have a black that I'm going to use for my silver beads. I have a purple for my flower. I have an orange for my mango slice or whatever that is. Is it a cantaloupe? Okay. We'll call it a cantaloupe. Okay. All right. I think that was all my colors. Everything else is just regular colors that have not been messed with. So in case I run out or I find a variation of a color that I want to make, okay? So what I'm going to show you guys today is how a couple different ways I want you to go about starting your drawing or your painting. Can everyone see? Yeah. I'm trying to get everything within shot. So depending on which way you have your paper turned, so if I have it from this way, one option is start from top to bottom. Some people like to do that so they're not rubbing their hand through any of their paint. An easy solution to that would be putting a piece of paper towel down so your hand rests on that paper towel instead of the paper as you paint. Now, if we had as many, you know, palettes as I have, I have two of them, plus a lid, you know, it'd be great because you could make every single color you need, right? But we don't have that luxury. So, can we close the door? Thank you. So one of the ways we could do this is we can go, okay, I made three colors. Those are the colors I'm going to start with and I'm going to paint everything on my page with that color so that I don't have to remake it as many, that many times. Okay. doesn't mean you might not have to go back later and remake it. Okay. So I'm going to start with my flower first. You are always going to have your color mixing page. Let me get mine out. So here's mine. I have my color mixing page and you're going to have your photo. So you have your recipes and your image. A lot of times your recipes, you might end up changing, but it's a good starting point, right? Maybe as you start painting, you're like, oh, that's just not dark enough. I want to change it. You'll have the recipe and you'll know what to add to it to make it darker. Please don't be on your phone. Okay. All right. Let's move back. So I'm going to start with my flower. The inside is green. The outside is purple. One of the biggest rules you want to do is if you're painting one object, you don't want to paint anything that's touching that object until this one dries. Okay. If we had actual acrylic paint and not tempera, which is what we have, it's kind of, tempera is kind of like an in-between between like a really cheap version of acrylic and uh, watercolor. Watercolor, they run together really, really fast. Tempera is not as bad, but if your paint is really watered down, they're going to run. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my medium color on my flower. So instead of just dipping into this color, I'm going to take some, put it aside, 
and see if there's, do I need to add any water to it? Is it too thick? Is it just how I like it? If it's a little too dark, I'm going to take, oh, I didn't give myself white. So, should I take my white and just put it into my purple? What, what color are we supposed to start with first? White. If you start with purple and then put white in, it's going to be a, a battle. Whereas if you put white down first and add a little bit of purple, it's probably going to get the color you want a lot faster. Or else you're going to have to put a lot of white to get the color you want. I like to start lighter first and then work darker, but not at my lightest or else I'm going to just be covering it up a bunch. The thing about these paints too is it's going to dry about a shade or two darker than what it looks like on your palette. So I'm going to come in here, get it to focus, Oops. and because I'm starting on my outside flower, I need to remember I'm not going to do anything on the inside flower. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to get as many of those textures as I drew as possible. You see how little paint is on my brush? If I tap it, nothing's coming off. That's what you want. Start with a little. Make sure there's no water dripping on from your brush. A lot of times when you rinse it out, the water clings to the handle of the brush and it will drip on your painting and you just don't want that. If you're not very good at painting because you've just never done it before, another th thing you can do is you can just take water. This is really popular in watercolor. And just paint on with water first. You don't want it dripping. Then you can take your paint and it kind of it kind of runs cuz it was already wet you see that it's just kind of and it won't go beyond where you put that water but you see the texture it started to create can you see it kind of Do you see the difference between the two? This one, it was already wet. This one is what we call dry brushing. So the paper was dry, right? So you can always do a combination. If I have that here already, I can come back. I can rehydrate. Not scrubbing so it doesn't take off any paint. I can take some of my darker color and I can come in here and add some texture. And it's not going to be a harsh line because it was already wet. It just makes it a lot softer. And we'll see what that looks like when it starts to dry. Alright, so let me take a look. I ran out of my purple, but that's okay because I remember how to make it. Put some white. Maybe this time you'll realize, oh, I need to make a lot more. I can take a little of my purple, 
I'm going to put it on the side, add a little water to it, mix it into my white. Now, I have some sections of my flower that are a lot lighter. So, there's no reason to do those super dark. So, where am I at? Okay, so I got my darker ones down here. It's hard to get everything in the picture. So, I can do my lighter ones up here. So what is it called when I'm just painting straight on the paper? Do you remember what I called it? Dry brushing, right? So if I did it super fast, it would be kind of streaky. Do this one back here. Now, the bottom of this petal here is a little darker, so what I can do before it dries is I can come in, add some of that darker color, and I'm going to spread it out as I go. I'm going to dry off my brush real quick, and I'm just going to drag that color to blend it. This is why we work one section at a time. Don't paint the whole flower purple and then try and go back. Start with section by section. All right. Our next part, I'm going to try and do a little bit of my strawberry. So what technique do you guys want me to try first? Dry brushing or wet into wet? Dry brush. So I'm just going to put a little water on my palette right here, a little of my red for my strawberry, add a little more water because I want it really fluid, and then I'm going to paint this whole strawberry. See how I'm not leaving globs of paint behind as I go? I'm smoothing it out. I don't want to leave all these ridges because it's just going to take longer to dry and I know this is only my first layer. So the best way is you're going to work in layers. Maybe today you'll just get, you know, a couple of your colors down. Make enough of your colors, though, so it'll actually last. Don't make, like, a minuscule amount. And then, you know, every couple times you paint, you have to keep remaking it. Alright, now the top part of my strawberry is lighter, so I'm going to rinse out my brush. Heads up, please. Gentlemen. I'm going to get my paintbrush wet, and I can come in here, and I can kind of scrub the paper, and I can bring that color up. Then I can come back with a little bit of more of my red and at that barrier, I can bring it up as well.
So now I've done a wet and a wet and I've done dry brushing. Doesn't have to look perfect. We can always come back. Okay, so that would be good for today. If you can work on each section and get some color put down. If you want to do a little bit of color matching just on like say each petal or each section of your fruit. What I wouldn't do is go into any tiny details whatsoever because we still have to do all of our shadows and everything before we put any of these glares. All right. Any questions about that? All right. I don't want to kill your attention span, so we'll stop it there.